Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending this tutorial session. In this session, we will give you our talk about auto machine learning for deep recommendation systems. In this talk, we will cover both the fundamental concepts about deep recommendation systems, as well as advanced topics about uh, auto machine learning technologies developed for uh, recommendation systems. Uh, this uh, the pre presenters of this talk comes from uh, Hoi Luas ACNAP and City University of Hong Kong and Hong Kong Polytech University. Uh, Limi is the director of the Hoi, Hoi Luas Recommendation and Research Lab and Chen Bo, Hui Feng and me are, are senior researchers from Hoi Luas uh, Recommendation and Research Lab. Ye Jin is a PhD student from City University of Hong Kong, and Wen Qi is an assistant professor from Hong Kong Polytech University, and Xiang Yu is an assistant professor from City University of Hong Kong. Recommendation systems is a type of information systems, <coughs> which has been uh, widely used to serve the information overall, overall problems. Their objective is to suggest some relevant items to users based on the user's uh, unique needs and also their preference. Uh, this kind of items can be both, the, uh, for example, the news, images, movies, books, and other types of things. And recommendation systems uh, in practice have been widely applied to different online services, such as the uh, e-commerce, content sharing service, online social networking service. Uh, the representative uh, e-commerce uh, service uh, include Amazon, Taobao, eBay, Jindong, and on this kind of platforms, the recommendation service, uh, recommendation systems are usually used to provide product recommendations to users based on their historic behavior patterns. This figure shows an example about the book recommendation on Amazon platform, which is generated based on the bot together behavior patterns of users. And for the content sharing service, such as uh, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest, and Google News, the recommendation systems are usually used to deliver interest, interesting content to users to attract their attention and also to improve their experience on this type of platforms. And these two figures show some this figure shows some uh, examples about the uh, news recommendation and also the video recommendations. And for this online social networking uh, service, the <coughs> recommendation systems uh, can uh, provide both the different recommendation and also the content recommendation based on your social relationships. And this figure shows an example about the friend recommendation on Facebook. Uh, under a general setting, we usually consider the historic interactions as the input of the recommendation model. And then the objective of the recommendation model is to predict how likely a user will interact with a target item, as well as the preference level of the user and the item. Let's consider the movie recommendation uh, as an example. For this movie recommendation system, we may consider your historic ratings on the movies as a model input. And then the model uh, objective can be that we predict how likely our user will watch our target movie. And also maybe we can predict the exact rating that our user will uh, are seeing on, on, on an item. To improve the model performance, sometimes we may also consider uh, other set of information to improve the performance. For example, in this task, we may consider the year, category, actor, and review information of the movies. And we may also consider the user set of, set of information, for example, the user's age, gender, and also some social relationships to improve the recommendation performance. Probably filtering is the most well-known uh, tactics for recommendation uh, model. And the basic assumption is that similar users tend to have similar preference on the same target item. And metrics factorization is one of the most widely used 
collaborative filtering techniques. <clears throat> For this kind of uh, method, the main objective is that we try to nurse some uh, representations of the users and the item to approximate the observed user item interaction metrics. So for this type of methods, the most important part is to learn good representations of the users and the items. So when we're talking about the learning the uh, representations, the most uh, <coughs> the technology comes to our mind maybe is uh, deep learning techniques, which has achieved promising uh, performance in computer vision tasks, speech and audio processing tasks and natural language processing tasks. And uh, motivated by this uh, success, we also explore how to apply deep learning to improve the recommendation model performance. This is our general structure of the deep learning based recommendation systems. This uh, structure includes several different components. The first component is a, is a input feature layer. And this layer we consider to find some useful uh, and relevant features to improve the, <coughs> to build the recommendation system. For example, we may consider the user profile, item attributes, and also some context information of the user item interaction. And the following uh, co uh, co components includes the feature embedding layer and the feature interaction layer and the output layer. For the feature embedding layer, we map the observed feature observed features into the latent space. And for the feature interaction layer, we try to nurse the high order interactions between different features and also the nonlinear relationships between the user and the item. And from uh, for this uh, whole structure, usually we may consider different factors for different modules. So and to have a uh, to achieve a good performance, usually we need to uh, consider this factor from our system uh, design perspective. For example, <clears throat> under the out layer uh, of this neural structure, usually we may consider different types of loss functions. For example, the uh, classification loss, ranking loss, and also some regression loss to train the deep learning models. And for the feature interaction layers, we may consider different operations on the features, for example, pulling operations and convolution operations. <clears throat> and sometimes we may also consider the number of layers uh, for feature interaction. For the feature embedding layer, usually we may consider the dimensions of the embedding size. And from the whole system perspective, we may also consider other factors such, such as the hardware inf infrastructure, data pipeline and information transfer and other uh, factors. And these types of deep learning uh, based recommendation systems have uh, the following advantages. For the first one is that they can uh, learn good feature representations of the users and items. And also they can learn some nonlinear relationships between the users and items. However, they also suffer some uh, issues. For example, the uh, develop, development of this kind, type of models usually require some domain uh, expert knowledge and also require uh, extensive engineering efforts and also uh, takes a lot of uh, time to develop this model. And the human bears and error that may cause suboptimal uh, de develop design of the model structures and cause the reduction of the model performance. So to serve this type of <clears throat> these issues, uh, we can use a auto machine learning te techniques to automatically design the uh, deep architecture of the recommendation models. For these types of uh, methods, they have the following advantages. Firstly, they require, require less expert domain knowledge, and they can help uh, save the uh, engineering efforts and the development time cost. And certainly uh, for this automation learning method, they can automatically de design different architectures for different improved data. Thus, they can develop the task-oriented 
uh, there are structures for different recommendation tasks. Uh, this figure shows uh, the shows the trend of the automation learning method for recommendation systems. For this figure, we can, uh, can have the following uh, observations. Firstly, the existing automation learning methods uh, evolves from a single domain, single component search to multi-component joint search. And secondly, the search space of this uh, automation learning method develops from the details to abstract for shrinking search space and improving the search efficiency. And thirdly, the search algorithm of existing work is mainly based on gradient-based methods and thus can provide efficient model searching and model training. This is the agenda for today's talk. Uh, next, we will introduce some background of, uh, about other machine learning techniques and uh, introduce the feature selecting module, embedding component, in interaction component of the deep recommendation systems. After that, we will uh, introduce the model training and the comprehensive search of the deep recommendation systems. Finally, we will conclude this talk and discuss some future directions. If you uh, are interested in this topic, you may refer to our survey paper and also the tutorial website for more details. Okay, next I will pass to Xiang Yu to introduce the background about auto machine learning. Uh, yes, thanks for the introduction from Dr. Dong. And uh, I'm Xiang Yu Zhao from the City University of Hong Kong. And in this part, we will introduce the preliminary of automatic machine learning and the neural architecture search. Uh, again, this is our survey paper. Yes, if you have interest in this topic, please uh, refer to our paper. Mm, okay. Uh, so our, in this section, our first question is why we develop automatic machine learning. So I think one of the reasons uh, why you are uh, listening to this tutorial is you somehow believe the success of AI. So in recent years, there are many very successful AI applications in all kinds of uh, fields, such as chemistry, uh, medicine, intelligent production, recommendations, and many, many more, even in arts, right? Uh, so there are many AI applications and uh, more and more people will work in AI. Uh, I think some of you have already uh, have some experience in developing AI applications. So you may know that in these years, if you are talking about AI, so it means somehow machine learning or even deep learning. And of course, uh, there are only one part of AI, but I think that's the most center part right now. So, uh, so if if you would like to apply machine learning to new task, you need to consider the following things. First of, all, uh, first of all, you need to define your task based on your domain knowledge, and uh, secondly, you need your data, right? So you need to sit, uh, sit there and try to collect the data set from many sources. Uh, but what I, I'm most interested today is the third part, uh, which is the machine learning. How do we process the data and uh, the way that we get a prediction? Uh, so we can define the machine learning pipeline. The machine learning pipeline usually consists data cleaning, feature engineering, model, uh, training and uh, maybe even some kind of post processing. And uh, for all these components, actually we have different uh, different kind of algorithms and all these algorithms maybe even have some hyperparameters you have to deal with. And then only the best combination of all of them can lead to the best performance. And then you can deploy it in the commercial system. So uh, this is a difficult task, right? So ne you need some kinds of experts being knowledgeable of all kinds of this part and uh, try to figure out what's the best combination. But uh, unforget uh, unfortunately, the task to figure out the best combination is very tedious and time consuming. So people had to sit there maybe for weeks 
months or even longer to figure it out. And in addition, we also face many other problems during the machine learning pipeline, such as the complex space, black box problem, intensive evaluation, and the noise on the observations. So that's the reason why our goals, we aim to support, uh, support the developers and the alternating, alternating this, this part, right? So uh, we are trying to build uh, is an automating method which simply uh, simply prepare the machine learning pipelines given your data. And the uh, overall mission of AutoML is to enable user to efficiently apply machine learning for a new AI task and the data sets. And then uh, if we use machine learning, we can automatically make this system designer's decisions. Uh, yeah, in part, in particular, if we go into the direction of deep learning, what we need to talk about is the architecture of the deep neural networks, like how many layers, how many neurons, what kind of operations, what kind of con connections between the operations. Okay, so you have a lot of decision, uh, design decision again. And it really depends on your deep neural, uh, neural network architecture, whether it performs well or not. So uh, actually the problem of a neural architecture search or NAS is to find the neural architecture A, uh, such as the deep learning works best for the given data. So it is measured by the validation error of the architecture when you train the, uh, train the width of that architecture. And uh, I will call this width as W star of A. And then uh, this is a formal problem definition. We are trying to minimize the validation loss uh, of the architecture A with the optimized uh, parameters W star of A. And the optimized parameters means that we optimize the training loss with some something like SGD for the particular architecture. Okay, so we call the upper formula as the outer level problem or the architectural problem and call the lower formula as the inner level, which is to optimize the width of the neural network. And so you can think this is a bad level optimization problem. And this paper, uh, neural architecture search with reference learning was published by Aclear, uh, at Aclear by Zofan Lee. And since this paper, uh, the research direction of a neural architecture search hits the mainstream, and uh, we have seen exponential growth of the number of NAS papers published every year. Okay, uh, next we will talk about the major components of neural architecture search. So typically the neural architecture search is a system with three major components. The first one is the search space. Uh, typically the search space defines a set of operations such as convolution, pooling, or MLP, and how to connect these operations to form a valid neural architecture. And the, the, the design of search space usually involves human expertise. So this process will introduce some human bias. The sixth one is a search strategy. A search strategy will sample a set of neural architecture candidates, or we usually call them as the child model. And it's received the child model performance uh, as the reward, such as uh, high accuracy or low latency. And uh, it's optimized to generate the hyperperformance uh, of, uh, of the child network, child uh, models. Uh, and the third one, the third component is the evaluation strategy. So here we need to estimate or to predict the performance of a large number of proposed child models in order to obtain the feedback for the search algorithm to learn. So conventionally, uh, this was often done by training a network from scratch, but uh, uh, its process could be very expensive. 
So that's uh, uh, so many new methods has been proposed to save the time or the computational uh, resources, such as the weight sharing or one shot models. Okay, so that's the uh, three major components of NAS. And next, I will introduce the techniques of search algorithms. Uh, as I mentioned, the first paper that makes the NAS problem popular is neural architecture search with reinforcement learning. And uh, what was really great is that for the first time, this paper actually yield the state-of-art results for real-world benchmark such as C410 and the Pantry Bank. And another thing that got a lot of attention is that they said that it also take a lot of computational resources. Uh, they, can, they, they actually use 800 GPUs for three to, uh, three to four weeks. And in total, they tried 12K and uh, 800 architectures. And uh, this shows that if we have very large computational power, we can find better neural architectures than human designers. Okay, so uh, how did they use reinforcement learning for uh, for this? Okay, uh, actually they have a controller, uh, which is a recurrent neural network. And uh, this have a probability output uh, so you could sample the architecture from this with a certain probability. And then you can train this child network with the sampled architecture to get uh, accuracy as the reward. And then you can compute the gradient of these probabilities and scale it by the reward R to, to update the controller. Okay. So let me talk in more detail so, uh, about the reinforcement learning approach. So uh, here is the hyperparameters of the uh, convolutional neural networks, uh, such as the feature his, feature v's, and the number of features. And uh, these parameters are represented as a string in the RN controller. And uh, all the CN layers has uh, this type of parameters. So when you have a new layer, the new you, you need to sample this type of hyperparameters. And as I said, when we update the width of the controller by reference learning, which is the approximate gradient scaled by the reward. Okay, so this is the reference learning method. Uh, okay, so another NAS approach is actually just the hyperparameter optimization. So because in the end, all you care about is that you have values for a number of filters, uh, filter heat, filter width, and so on, right? So you could directly work in this, this uh, search space. So in this CVPR paper, uh, in this paper, so in fact, they come up with the two cells and uh, each of them has 25 uh, decisions. So you could just see a single space of uh, 50 categorical hyperparameters and use directly the hyperparameter optimization techniques. Okay, so this paper proved that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the neural architecture search and the hyperparameter optimization. Uh, so another approach that has been used for NAS is uh, neural evolution. So in fact, since the 1990s, uh, this was typically used to search both the architecture and the width of the neural networks. So, and uh, more, more recently, this SML paper, uh, they just use SGD to train the neural, uh, neural networks and only use the evolution in order to do a search over the neural architectures. And uh, here is their training process, where you can see that in the beginning, uh, you, uh, you have actually a very simple architecture. And over the time, you discover more and more complex architectures, and actually they perform very well in the end. And also the evolution method has shown has also been shown to work better than uh, reference learning and the random search in this paper 
and the evolution actually find better performance faster than the reinforcement learning at a quite a bit faster than the random search. Okay, so the the reinforcement learning and the evolution method we just introduced are actually black box method. And uh, typically the black box method need a lot of computation to find the best architecture. For example, on the CIFAR-10 dataset, uh, reinforcement learning and the evolution methods need at least uh, 2000 GPU days to find the best uh, uh, neural architectures. Uh, so next, we will talk about the speed up techniques for NAS. And uh, there will be four type of techniques here. And today I will introduce the first two due to the limit time. Okay, so the first one is the network uh, uh, inheritance or uh, or the weight inheritance or the network morphism. Okay, the network morphism are the operators that change the network architecture, but not the model function. So that means that for every input, after you apply the network morphism, the network yields the same output as before. So for example, you have a pre-trained -pre network and you put in a layer and then uh, your network becomes this one, okay? And we see that uh, this layer is just an identified mapping, right? So if this is an identified mapping, the output from this method, this modified architecture is still the same as before, right? So uh, we can use this network morphism in us as operations to get the new network. And uh, we don't need to train from scratch, right? Because we have pre uh, predefined or pre-trained -pre networks uh, available, right? And uh, uh, you can just fine tune this one. Okay, so this network morphism allows us to begin with some models that have a certain performance and do fast architecture search. And the second speed up method I want to talk about is the weight sharing or uh, one-shot models. Uh, the most popular approach in this domain is the DAS algorithm. Uh, that stands for the uh, differentiable architecture search by Liu et al. at, Li, uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, 2090. Okay, so this is a pipeline uh, of the DAS algorithm. And uh, first uh, you can, uh, uh, you have this discrete architecture problem. You, ha you have operations on the edge and uh, you want to choose between different operations for each edge or uh, each of these edges. Okay, and uh, in particular, in this figure, uh, we have red operation green red iteration and the blue operation, right? For example, the three by three uh, kernel, five by five kernel, max pooling and so on. Okay, uh, then the Dutch algorithm relax this, uh, this discrete NAS problem where you only can choose one things. And now we can use all the different operations between these edges and we put a weights on them. Okay, so this is a, a mixed operation between the node i and the node g. Uh, it is just a weighted sum of all the individual operations and the weights are these alphas. Okay, and we call these alphas as the architectural problem. And then uh, we can actually use the gradient descent method uh, to optimize this alphas, right? Because the alpha is a continuous value. So you solve this bi-level optimization problem and you look for the alpha that give you the minimal validation loss. Okay, so this is a typical pipeline for the search stage where we go from here to here and uh, some weights become stronger and some weights become weaker. Okay, uh, then the last step it does is to, uh, is to each of this, uh, to, is to discrete 
each of these edges again, right? They only keep the strongest edges and the weaker edges just go away. And uh, then you have a single architecture again, not this weighted sum manner. Okay, so that's the DART uh, approach. And uh, this model is very popular because uh, you can actually solve this bad level optimization problem by just using a gradient descent uh, method, right? Doing a gradient step on the alpha and uh, uh, followed by a gradient step on the Vs and uh, a gradient step on the alpha and uh, continue, right? So, so this is a very simple algorithm, and uh, there is no proof of a of no proof of convergence or anything. But uh, this method actually works very well in practice to find the best architecture, and also because its simplicity and uh, its fast speed. Uh, I think most of auto auto ML for recommendation models use this method. Okay, so th these are the two. Uh, speed up method of NAS. And uh, this is the introduction of the preliminary of uh, auto, uh, auto ML. And next, Mr. Ye Jing Wang will introduce the automatic feature selection in the deep recommender system. Okay, I will um, pass my control to Ye Jing. Uh, next, so I'm going to show some automated feature selection methods for uh, deep recommend assistance. Mm. Feature selection aims to select predict predictive features prior to model construction. You can see it here before the constructing the model. And this process is rather important since it could help the model to enhance both the efficiency and accuracy. And and according, according to different classification criteria, we could divide uh, feature selection methods into several groups. And this, this criteria includes uh, selection candidates, selection granularity, and how they combine with the subsequent deep command assistance. First, I want to, I want to introduce the, uh, the first selection criteria, selection candidates. In fact, we could select uh, we could select futures from raw futures. Well, well this raw futures is just the input uh, futures like occupation, occupation, date, and age. And the second is selection from the raw uh, from generated futures. Here we present two examples of um, second order crossing futures, including uh, occupation and age, and uh, the occupation and the date, and uh, it. It, um, it is no, uh, worth noting that selection from the generated futures is different with future interaction search. We will, we will introduce in the following su uh, sections. Um, selection from generated futures is conduct con conducted in an explicit way uh, during the future engineering process, while the future interaction search is uh, combines futures in, a, in an implicit way during the constructed model. And then the second um, classification um, criterion is uh, the selection um, granularity. Uh, there are two, two kinds of granularity. The first is a field level selection and the, the second is future level selection. And uh, the future level, uh, field level selection means that we select or deselect the whole future fields. Uh, like uh, here, we, here we drop the whole, da uh, whole date future fields for, for the recommend system. And the second is future level selection. That means we do not drop the whole future, uh, all future futures in, 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 a, in specific future fields, but we just select, um, we just uh, drop some of them. And um, like here, we drop the two, uh, zero to three age um, for this, Example, maybe since it may be a recommended system for adults, uh, adults application. So there, there will be no zero to three features. Uh, and uh, the, the, last, uh, uh, the last classification criteria is combinational method. Uh, this is a traditional uh, classification criteria for feature selection method. And uh, we could divide them into filters, wrappers, and the embedded method. 
And filters usually uh, design scoring functions to score uh, futures and uh, drops, uh, drops the futures with the lowest scores. And uh, this kind of uh, method usually, neg neg usually neg neglects, neg neglects the dependency with subsequent deep recommend assistance. And as a result, uh, they, may, they may generate a, a, a suboptimal future set and uh, obtain worse uh, performance. And the second group is a, is a wrapper. Wrappers usually elaborate the future set with, uh, uh, with a search algorithm like ready search and uh, combine with uh, uh, the uh, deeper command system they will use according to the performance of corresponding future set for the um, deeper command assistance. They could search for the best ones. And since we should obtain, obtain the final performance of recommended models, this, this kind of method usually, uh, are usually computationally intensive. And the last one is the embedded method. And this kind of method in, integrates the future selection process into the deep recommend system. So it is easy to construct this, mo this kind of models. And, and there is a, there, there is a it is easy for us to get the model performance and the future selection results together for embedding methods since they are integrated. And, and as a result, this kind of method usually suffer from the fixed backbone deep recommend models. When we want to change, the, change this model, we should conduct the future selection once more. And in this tutorial, we mainly divide the future selection methods according to the, the selection candidates, um, raw futures or generated futures. And we also will, uh, we will also present the gra uh, selection granularity and uh, how they combine with the uh, deeper command assistance. The first work I want to introduce is FSTD. Uh, in this work, future selection is regarded as a one uh, as a one player game, and uh, futures are selected by um, temporal difference reinforcement learning. It conducts a few uh, field level selection, and uh, uh, it uh, the, in this work, um, two two future selection methods are uh, suggested. Um, they use filters or a wrapper, and. There are two stages. There are two stages in FSTD. The first stage is a UCB phase, and the second is a random phase. Uh, here is an example with a, a three by three tech talk game to um, to to explain the uh, these two phases. The selection strategy is different in in this uh, in two phases. Uh, in UCB phase, we 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 exploit the existing information, and uh, select or deselect. Uh, we we add the most uh, predictive future to the future set or a uh, stored decision. And um, as you can see in Fig A, we make uh, we we record re we record all states we have we have we have seen uh, we have seen and uh, we could make. Uh, we, we, we could know which decision is the best and we will select it. And or we have seen this state for several times and we usually adopt a strategy. Then we will use this strategy. So it is used, uh, it, it is used uh, for uh, most uh, predict futures or stored futures. And for random phase, it is mainly um, set for the unseen state. And in, in this kind of state, like in Fig B, we mainly explore the unknown, unknown environment. We, may, we, ha we have not seen these states before, and we usually generate a random decision, one of them. And the transition of two, two stages is depending on um, we, whether we have seen these states in our history. And um, transitioning from A and B, the, um, the reward for, it, for the reinforcement learning is set as a UC score after we change the recommendation model to the converge. And uh, the, the optimization is uh, finished by temporal difference algorithm. And uh, after several epochs of training, 
we could uh, we could score the futures with average of reward difference. That's to say, um, here is uh, future F, and every time we we add it to the to the future set, we could obtain a difference in the reward. Well, this this V is a AUC score we used for reward, and we calculate this average uh, average of these differences, and uh, as uh, we could uh, set it as uh, score or importance for the corresponding future F. And for the final, uh, final selection, we have this AOR score for all of the futures. We just uh, select futures with highest AOC as a filter as a filter method, or we go through the traversed uh, graph space, like um, in this field A. We have seen all of these uh, this states before, and we conduct a random search or greedy search in, in this space. This is a wrapper method with FSTD. We could adopt one of, the, one of them. And besides the uh, temporal difference for reinforcement learning, we, also, we could also use a deep, Q, deep QNet to optimize the uh, uh, future selection process. And, and and we, uh, I will next uh, introduce MARLFS. Well, uh, in, uh, in this work um, select the futures with deep QNet. And it, in this work, also assign a, assign an agent for each future field. And that, that's to say, every future field would have an agent. And the action of this agent is to select or deselect the corresponding futures, where the environment is uh, consists of the selected future subset. Here is here is an example, and well, it, and there are four agents for uh, a set for the four futures, and uh, the environment is consists of the selected futures. To depict the um, to depict the environment, the select the future metrics. There are three 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 methods suggested in this paper. The first is uh, is using a met meta descriptive statistics that um, like uh, this descriptive statistics uh, includes uh, standard standard uh, standard uh, variation variance and uh, mean like like this and the quarters. Um, for to obtain the final state, we first conduct a, uh, we first compute the descriptive statics along 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 the columns that uh, and then we compute it again for every row and we we get this meta descriptive statistics matrix and by concatenating all of this Together we got we got uh, we get the final state vector, and the second is auto encoders. Um, in this uh, this method is uh, similar to the previous one. That's to say, we first project the columns into the latent space, then we project the rows to the to the latent state and concatenate and, and concatenate them together as our state vector. And the last, uh, the last method is using graph convolutional networks. And with this method, we could, we could um, construct a fully connected graph for all of, all of selected futures, where the, uh, the node representation for every node is its, all of its values, every loss. And uh, with this graph, we could conduct a GCN for this graph, and um, by and by by the method passing and the aggregation, we could get the final state vectors in, like this. And with the environment state, the selection decision is made according to the state we 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 obtain by one of this method, and with the selected. Uh, with the selected futures, they, the reward function is set as the sum of um, deep recommend assistance accuracy and, and some information, uh, mutual information, including the redundancy and the relevance. Um, the information in redundancy um, could, 
could evaluate the similarity between the selected futures I and, and J. In this way, we could figure out whether we have selected too many similar futures and, and thus and the future set, future set is redundant. And the second one is uh, information relevance. We compute the relevance for every selected futures with the ground truth to figure out whether the selected futures are, re uh, re uh, are useful. And the final optimization is conducted by DeepQNet. And there are some subsequent works for MAILFS. The first is AutoFS. In this work, some, out, uh, some external trainers is introduced to help hesitant agents to make a assertive, uh, assertive uh, decision. That's to say, we can see here are some agent do, do not uh, have a assertive decision by introducing some external knowledge, we could get a, a assertive result. And the second one is auto GFS. In this work, users reduce the number of the number of agents by grouping futures and uh, um, enhance the future selection by considering the intergroup inter and intergroup information. And, uh, and so although uh, although auto GFS reduces the future number, uh, or reduce the number of agents, it is still conducted by multi-agent. And the authors further stresses that we could select the futures by a single agent. And the last, uh, authors also propose a method to uh, select futures and samples at, a, at the same time. All of this work are, uh, are, are optimized by DeepQNet. And and since we can, since we we can find that um, for or or above um, reinforcement learning based method, and um, they they should uh, obtain the final prediction uh, to get the accuracy of the deep recommend assistance, and uh, use this result to consider their their reward functions to evaluate whether their decision is is profitable. And, and in this case, they are they are uh, they are usually computational intensive since uh, since we ch should train train the deep recombination model. Um, so uh, researchers have uh, have researchers and uh, researchers develop some um, to uh, develop some end to end future selection methods to apply gradient descent, which is usually more. Uh, more efficient than uh, reinforcement learning, and the first work I want to I want I want to introduce for um, gradient based uh, uh, methods is auto field. Um, considering that uh, manually selecting future field by human expert um, requires a lot of expert knowledge and labor efforts, um, this work aims to automatically select future fields and. Uh, and there are two stages. Uh, there are two stages in the auto field: the, and the search stage and the retraining stage. And in in the search stage, uh, the the field embeddings are first input to the controller, and the controller um, first generates a software selection method, a software selection result, and the put and uh, input them to the and soft selection result to the um, deep recommend assistance. And in this stage, autofield updates the deep recommend assistance and the controller at the same time. Uh, and for retraining stage, we should get the optimal selection result. And uh, it is conducted in a hard selection way. And uh, we then optimize the deep recommend assistance for retraining. And it is noteworthy that we could use the different different models in search and retraining. In this way, we could change the backbone model very convenient. And uh, for the construction, uh, for the, for the construct, uh, for the controller structures in auto field, um, the search space is defined as the N parallel nodes for N future field. That's to say, uh, for example, here are three future field and uh, and three three nodes par parallel nodes, and each node contain two values. The first is uh, alpha one i, 
which the and uh, which represents the probability of selecting this future. And the second is alpha zero i, which denotes um, the probability of dropping this field. And during the training of auto field, um, alpha one i of the predictive future would increase, and alpha zero i for non predict futures would increase. And this pipeline is somehow is very similar to that as introduced by Dr. Xiang Yu Zhao. And in this example, we could find that the future field one and the future field three are, um, are, are predict futures since they have a larger um, alpha one values. And uh, for this, these values, it is computed by Gumbo SoftMax, a uh, SoftMax, so that the whole framework could be optimized by gradient descent. And after the after the search after the search stage, we, we should select all the predict predictive features and uh, retrain a deep recommendation model for deployment. And there are three steps for the retraining. The first the first is select is a hard selection. And that's to say we should select several future fields with the highest score, uh, highest alpha one I. And uh, in the, just in the example, as, be, as the last, uh, last page of slides, we select the uh, field one and the field three as the predictive futures. And, and this is the selection step. And second step, and the second step, we should adapt the model structure. That's to say, <coughs> In the search stage, we keep the embedding parameters for um, for these uh, non-predict futures, which we dropped in the uh, dropped in the retraining stage. We should uh, omit these parameters and just uh, keep the parameters for future field one and future field three. And the last step, we may change the subsequent deep recommender system as 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 the first stage for auto field. We may use the MLP in in the search stage and uh, change to the deep FM in the uh, retraining stage. And we can find that uh, for mentioned methods usually select a fixed fixed set, subset of futures for uh, for deep recommend systems. However, um, this could uh, mis mis uh, misguide the deep recommend uh, deep recommend system to generate a wrong prediction. And uh, uh, for example, um, for, for the movie Star Wars, uh, if we select a fixed subset, maybe the, op the, op the op occupation is dropped for, the, for this recommendation model. Well, maybe there is a college student who, is, uh, who, 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 are, who are usually interested in this kind of movies. Um, Without considering his uh, occupation, we may get, get a wrong, get a wrong, uh, wrong prediction. While we consider his occupation, we could get the uh, right prediction. So this work at RFS is conducted to um, adaptively, adaptively selecting the most predict, predictive futures for different uh, data examples. Um, AFS is constructed based on uh, typical uh, deep recommend system structures, which, which usually consists of embedding component and uh, inference, the inference model. Here is uh, a multi-layer perception. And uh, it, 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 in, it embeds a controller to, uh, to finish the, uh, to adaptively scoring all of the future fields. Well, the behavior of this controller could could um, we could use a hard selection or a soft selection for this controller, and the, the controller, the the structure of controller is pre, um, is visualized as this feature uh, as this field, and it, it is consists of a simple multi layer perception and a soft max to get to get the scores for future fields with some uh, that sum, sum up to one. And it is worth noting that before input to the controller, um, we can, uh, in this work, authors conduct the batch normalization to make, their, um, to make, make the embedding of different future fields comparable. 
um, and generate the uh, uh, suitable weights for different fields. And for the selection behavior of controller, we could use soft, softer selection or harder selection. For the, uh, for the softer selection, we just use the same results as the uh, um, controller out outputs we presented in the last page. And in this way, all, all future fields are, um, are, 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 are reserved for the prediction, but um, for predict predictive futures, they usually have a bigger future weights and, and have a bigger impact on the final prediction. And for the hard selection, we um, also selecting the future fields with several highest scores and conduct, conduct, the, and conduct the the reweighting and to to achieve the to achieve a uh, an end to end operator um, for hard selection also applies uh, um, k max pooling and uh, and reweighting. However, there is a drawback for adaptive future selection. That is, we should keep all of the models for all future fields, since um, different user and uh, do different user user item interactions may use different set of future fields. And uh, we should keep all of them. And we could we could we could say previous two works, including auto field and uh, add IFS. They usually use a continuous way to score different futures, and not that always, or we can we could say. And in this way, the, um, with this non zero weights, um, redundant futures could still have a have a compact for uh, have a compact on the final prediction during the search stage, which may uh, lead to a suboptimal um, selection result and. Uh, yeah, there is also no um, no theoretical guarantee that small weights um, um, implies the redundant future fields. So an um, LPFS this work is conducted to generate the exact exact zero weights and um, to search for the redundant futures in the search stage. And uh, I first introduced how how they and define the future selection pro problem in this work. And they just uh, embed the um, future selection layer before the model, mo uh, before the recommendation model. And they set get elements to represent whether, we uh, whether they select a specific future field here. These values will be zero or non-zero. And uh, and they, and they, they directly use the L0 normalization to, and to smooth the L0 to get, uh, and to get exact zero values. And for example, this function for this uh, gate here and uh, exact values for uh, redundant futures. And uh, with this and uh, with this smooth the L0 functions, we could find that they usually generate a uh, more polarized values compared with L1 approaches. <clears throat> and although L1 approaches could also generate exact zero future, uh, exact zero weight for redundant futures. And however, um, conduct the, uh, generate the get get value like this function um, would, uh, would lead to two problems. The first is that uh, one problem is um, that well, when um, when x equals to zero, the gradient is also zero for a uh, mentioned function. In this, uh, there are two problems for 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 the, for this. The first is it is very sensitive to noises, and th and there are maybe there are some outliers, and these outliers make the. Uh, the, the aforementioned function to zero by accident. However, since the gradient for this zero values is always zero, we could not um, adapt uh, adapt this decision to drop uh, for dropping this this future. So this is sensitive to nice. And the second, and 
user behaviors in our real world recommend system is, is always evolving. That to say, they may um, present different uh, interests in different time. And we, if uh, this phenomenon would lead, uh, just as before, and um, this zero, gra zero gradient could not help us to conveniently um, um, to modify our selection decision for different um, behaviors for even the same same user. Here, right uh, here, this uh, this gradient is zero for x equals to zero, and uh, as a result, users uh, uh, users um, stress the LPFS plus plus, where they could still get the. Uh, they could still get a, a zero value for redundant futures and, they, and well, they have, have this all of gradient larger than zero. And uh, we could find that this, this, this work is still an end-to-end -end, uh, future selection framework so that uh, it is also could be optimized by, by gradient descent. <laughs> and uh, um, previous works are all of previous are conducted field level selection as we presented. Uh, however, this this selection might be too coarse for real world recommend assistance. Um, for example, if we drop the whole whole future field like user ID, we may lot and uh, we may lose a lot of um, personalized personalized information. However, if we just uh, drop some of them. Like the IDs for um, for code start users, um, we could uh, we could always uh, enhance the, the model performance. Also, in the uh, in this work, opt FS uh, future interaction is also considered. Uh, since uh, since uh, existing work, uh, future select future interactions and uh, search works usually consider all all of the redundant futures uh, for the interaction search. These two parts in this work are considered uh, future level selection and uh, future interaction search. And just as before, I first introduced how they construct the future selection problem. And there are n future field in, in uh, I suppose there are n future field uh, here and uh, and the uh, and the k k i is uh, index for a specific future value in in the um, eyes um, in the eyes uh, future field here the first for field one and the second value for field one here is the k i and uh, to generate the uh, to, the future selection is incorporated to the um, to the deep recommendation model just as um, the last work in this way. And they, they, they also have some gates. And uh, in this world, uh, the, target, the target is searching for this, this gate values, should, uh, they should be zero or one. And for the future interaction search, it, it is, it, it is um, just generated by our, by, by our future selection results. And um, for example, for the interaction of ICE future, uh, Ki's future value and Kj's future future value, and um, they should they, they should be uh, both of they should be selected for for a uh, meaning for uh, future interaction. So um, to um, to search for these two parts, we just need to decide this Gki. And uh, here, big O is uh, interaction function for the interaction i and j. And the final prediction is um, is um, is made by uh, by um, by this equation where big G is pro um, big G projects the uh, um, embeddings to the interaction space. Here is the interrupt is the interaction um, result, and the big big H is used to um, generate the final prediction. And here we um, pre. Um, here we present some uh, examples uh, for big G, big O, and big H. And for example, um, for FM, big O is uh, in the product, uh, in the product, while there are, uh, well, big O and big big H is uh, is not. 
and and uh, and uh, in the third stage, uh, and the gate is generated um, by this equation. And uh, in fact, this GC is continuous, and this G uh, is uh, is a uh, normalized L zero, just just like this. And for retraining, uh, and for the retraining, and uh, the decision G is made by this continuous G. Um, based on it, uh, whether it is um, less than zero, and uh, in this way, by this continuous, okay, um, by this con um, continuous reduction, and um, by this continuous selection, um, we could conduct the uh, optimization by gradient descent. And here is a summary of future selection, a raw future selection. And first, the reinforcement learning methods consider the problem uh, usually as a, a Markov de decision process, and the, the, they are less prone to overfitting problems since they usually get the uh, final um, performance of the model when designing their reward functions. Uh, and the gradient-based approaches are more practical to real-world uh, applications since their uh, outstanding efficiency and the simplicity. And as we can see, they are very flexible to apply for future selection problem, just as we presented the um, problem definition. And uh, we next uh, introduce some gener uh, selection for generated futures. And uh, the first is auto cross. And in, the, uh, in, this, in this work, uh, the, uh, the future set is generated by, uh, by, a, by a tree, where the, the each child is, uh, and and is the each child of it, uh, each child is generated by adding to itself a crossing future like this. Here is an example. And to evaluate the the added future, and um, they conduct a fieldwise logistic logistic regression. Well, and um, here is uh, where well, they keep all of the origin parameters and just train the parameters for um, the new new for the new for new uh, crossing futures. And uh, this, this, this framework is optimized by beam search. And the second, the second one I want to use for, I want to introduce the for generated future selection is glider. Uh, and uh, this is very, the, set, the setting is very different in this work. And, and this work aims to select, select the uh, futures based on a uh, source model and, and the transfer the uh, and result to a target model, which are both maybe both black box. And uh, there are two steps in this work. First, since we have a, 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 have a source and have a source model and the data, we should first perturb, perturb the input futures or uh, to generate some um, some more data. And and the second, a gradient neural interaction detection score is designed to score all, all of these interactions. And this score means that whether the uh, crossing future is interaction the boundary, where the boundary is a line uh, is a linear model. And uh, in this way, both the lin linear, mo linear model and the um, black um, and the source model are uh, could be um, optimized by gradient design. And there are two perspectives, two perspectives for this, this work. The first is uh, the enhancement. If we set the target model and uh, uh, as uh, the same as uh, a source model, it, 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 it could be regarded as a uh, um, generated future selection method for um, model enhancement. And if, if, if the different models are used, uh, we could regard it as a knowledge, uh, knowledge um, transfer model. And the last goal I want to introduce is AEFE, where um, we construct them, well, constru uh, well, consider the uh, um, model, uh, consider the mo uh, future generation and the selection at the same time. And it is also noteworthy that in this work, um, the, the combination of filters and uh, embedding method and wrapper is, uh, is used. For, a wrapper, a for the filter, it drops the futures with low variance. Um, which are usually um, less pre uh, distinguishable. And the second, in the second step, uh, some embedded methods as gradient boost decision tree and the random forest is, um, 
is used to generate some future importance. And according to this future, future importance, um, they usually um, drop some, first drop some um, future features. And, the set, and, and the, at the last step, some wrappers are adopted to um, evaluate the future set. And all of the future set is uh, added to the, uh, all of the future is added to the future set in a, a cascading manner. That's to say we first, uh, and uh, we first uh, add the most important future to the set, uh, to the future set, and uh, use the greedy, greedy search method to search for the optimal future set. And uh, to conclude the generative futures, according to the results, we could find that select selective learning of generative futures um, is always, uh, could always improve the um, model accuracy. And however, um, the, the, uh, the search strat strategy they adopted is usually um, very, very computational intensive. To sum, uh, to, um, to sum up my, my, my part, um, we, we could find that the embedding method is very, very easy to use for feature selection problems. And uh, there are a uh, few attention is, um, uh, is attract, uh, uh, is, is there are few attention on the future level selection and maybe a, a research direction and and also for the scoring scoring method we may maybe an exact zero scores is more applicable for real real world applications and for the search strategy and the gradient descent method is um, dominant and next I um, Mr. Chen Bo will introduce a future embedding component for us. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Bo Chen from Huawei North China. In this part, I will present some automail based solution for the embedding component. Uh, as we can see, here is the architecture of the deep recommender systems, uh, which consists of several core modules, including the uh, including the feature embedding, uh, including the feature embedding layer, uh, feature interaction layer, in, and the up layer. Uh, as we can see, uh, by assigning each feature with an embedding vector, uh, uh, all the embedding vectors can be rest uh, can be restored in the embedding table. Uh, so, in order to solve the the problem of sparsity and the high dimensional deep recommender systems uh, use a feature embedding layer to map the high dimensional features into a low dimensional latent space. Uh, so uh, the feature embedding layer is one of the most important components for the deep recommendation models as the number of parameters is concentrated in the embedding table. Uh, the feature embedding layer not only affect the storage capacity and the inference efficiency, but also has a very important effect on the prediction accuracy. So in order to improve the prediction accuracy, uh, save the storage space, and then reduce the model size, uh, automail-based solutions are proposed for the learning of the feature embedding. The intuition behind is that for the high-frequency features, uh, using a larger embedding dimension can achieve a better performance because it can enhance the model's capacity. Instead, for the low-frequency features, uh, using a smaller one can uh, uh, using a smaller one can also achieve a better result because it can prevent the models from overfitting. According to the different search space, existing automail-based solution can be categorized into several uh, groups, including the full embedding dimension search, column and load embedding dimension search, and the combination-based embedding search. The full embedding search, uh, which will uh, search the optimal embedding dimension for the for all the feature values, uh, because it will perform uh, perform the five x grand embedding dimension. The advantages for the full embedding dimension search is that it can fully consider the impact of each feature embedding dimension on the prediction result. So therefore, the, uh, the high frequency or the low frequency features can, can be assigned with different dimension. However, the disadvantages is also obvious. The first one is uh, it will result a huge search space. So it is hard to attempt a satisfactory result. Besides, uh, because the full embedding search method will result in the embedding vectors with different dimension. So it is hard to uh, reduce the storage space. 
uh, AMTL, which is published in CICAM 2021, is belongs to the full embedding search. It first uh, proposed a mask layer uh, over the embedding layer. Uh, it will attempt a hard solution and some undesired dimensions can be reduced. In order to avoid the unbalanced parameter update due to the different frequencies, uh, MTL proposed a twin-based architectures. Uh, these architectures contains a two branch. The left one is designed for the high frequency features and the left one is designed for the low frequency features. Then a weighty sound operation is used to com combine the result from two branch and uh, which is based on the feature, uh, feature frequency. In order to attempt a hard selection and making the search process differentiable, a uh, SOMAX layer with a temperature hyperparameters is used to relax into a continuous space. Uh, finally, a straight through estimator is used uh, to cross the information gap between the search and the inference stage. The second work is PP, uh, similar as the MTL. It is a pooling based solution by enforcing the column wise sparsity on the embedding table uh, with L0 number normalizations. As we can see in this, uh, in this figure, uh, for some features just like the V1, the first elements can be set to zero so that the embedding dimension can be reduced. Uh, more importantly, uh, for some unimportant feature, just like the uh, V3, all the, uh, all the values can be set to zero so that this feature can be dropped. Uh, however, the L0 normalization is NP hard. So in order to achieve a similar purpose, uh, PP proposed a soft threshold uh, threshold parameter rejection trick by introducing a learnable pooling uh, threshold. When the absolute value of the embedding parameters is, is smaller than the threshold, the element's value can be set to zero. Uh, and the learnable uh, parameters can be jointly optimized with the model parameters. In summary, for the full embedding search methods, uh, they aim to search the optimal embedding dimension for each feature value, uh, which will face a huge search space and impact the search efficiency. So in order to overcome this problem, several approaches uh, is proposed to reduce the search space, including the column base, low base, and the column and low base, which will make different assumptions to, re to reduce the search space. The first one is the column base embedding dimension search. Uh, we can see that the search space of the full embedding search, uh, which is highly related with the embedding D, uh, in order to reduce the space, uh, column-based embedding search methods will divide the embedding dimension into different, uh, different several, uh, into several column-wise sub-dimension. So uh, by doing this, the search space is no longer with the embedding dimension D, but with the number of predefined sub-dimensions. Uh, auto embedding and ESAPN belongs to this, uh, this group. It reduces the search space by dividing the uh, original embedding dimension into several uh, candidate sub dimensions. Uh, the intuition behind that, they believe uh, they can search the uh, different embedding dimension for different user or items. Uh, by doing this, uh, assign, a, a, assign a larger embedding dimension for the high frequency use of items, it can achieve a better performance. However, for the low frequency uh, use of items, using a smaller embedding dimension is enough because it can achieve, achieve a, a better result and is more efficient in memory. Auto embedding is published in ICDM 2021. Uh, if it involves two control networks to decide the embedding dimension for the user and items. Uh, and it performs the soft selection strategy by sum, summing over the candidate sub dimensions with the learnable width. Uh, it first defines several embedding dimensions and then leverage, leverage the embedding lookup operations to attempt different embedding with uh, different dimensions. Then a linear transformation layer is used to converse the diverse embedding dimension into the same dimension. And a batch normalization layer with a 10H uh, activation functions is used, to, uh, is used to achieve a comparable result uh, and to unify the scales. 
then a controller leverage the feature popularity and some context information, including the loss and some hyperparameters are used and then used to, uh, and, and then fed into the MLP component. And the MLP will learn to uh, output the selection weights. And based on the selection weight, uh, the transform embedding will be used, will be aggregated to generate the final representations. And the optimization process is achieved by a bilevel uh, algorithm where the controller parameters are optimized upon the validation data set and the model's parameters, including the, including the embedding parameters and the uh, parameters in the MLP component will be learned on the training data set. The second one is ESAPN, uh, which is a hard selection strategy. Uh, it involves an embedding size adjustment policy network and it belongs to the IL based solution. Uh, similar, as the, as similar as the auto embedding, it first leverage uh, different embedding table to generate the embedding uh, vector with different dimension. Then a linear transformation and the best normalization layer is uh, performed to achieve a comparable result with same dimensions. Uh, then, Two policy networks serve as IO agents for the user and the items, which can, re, uh, which can adjust the embedding size. And the policy network leverage the feature frequencies and the current embedding size as the input. And the MLP component will uh, learn to output the selection uh, probability over, the, over to action, uh, which is enlarge the current embedding dimension or unchange the embedding and change the embedding dimension. And the policy network will receive the reward return from the deep, re deep recommendation models based on the uh, validation data set. Uh, finally, each user or each items will converse into an optimal embedding dimension. Uh, in conclusion for the column-based embedding search methods, uh, they divide the embedding dimension into column-wise sub-dimensions, uh, which is conduced uh, to reducing the search space Besides, they use multiple embedding, uh, embedding tables to generate different uh, embedding vectors, which may incur the obvious memory overhead. Um, besides, uh, searching dimension for each feature values will cause uh, variable length embedding vectors, which are hard to store in the FigWise embedding table and reduce the memory. So uh, another solution is to uh, grouping the feature values or field based on some indicator, just like the feature frequencies, and assign a global low-wise group embedding dimension for all, the for all the feature values within this group. By doing this, the search space is no longer related to the number of feature values, uh, which is V, but to the number of predefined feature groups. Uh, we can see in this in this figure the advantages for this uh, methods is that it can shake the search space, uh, making it easier for the search algorithm to export a satisfactory result. Be um, besides, it can uh, save the storage uh, space physically because all the all the features within a feature group will use a same embedding dimension, so it can reduce the it can reduce the space. The first one is SSEDS, which is published in the SIGR uh, 2022. Uh, a special case is setting the number of groups for a feature field as one, and then search a global embedding dimension for all the feature values within this group, which is reviewed to the uh, field-wise embedding dimension search. It first uh, calculate the salience scores for uh, identifying the importance of different embedding dimensions. Uh, which is measured by the change of the loss uh, by the loss values. After attaining all the salience scores, the top case scores can be retained according to the memory budget we can uh, put predefine pre them, and the models will be retrained to save the storage. And the second. Uh, and the second one is the auto SIH, which is published in the TKDE 2022. Uh, to balance the search efficiency and the performance, uh, it splits the features into multiple groups based on the feature frequencies. Uh, it involves a feature grouping uh, stage. With, with this stage, the, space, uh, the search space can be reduced because all the, all the feature values 
uh, can be grouped into the different feature groups and each feature groups can be uh, assigned with a global embedding dimension. Uh, specifically, a soft selection layer is inserted between the feature uh, between the feature embedding layer and the feature interaction layer. Uh, this layer is aimed to uh, identify the importance of each embedding dimension. Uh, Auto SIH is a two-stage method. Uh, during the first stage, uh, in order to relax the search space to be continuous, a uh, gradient-based bilevel optimization uh, algorithm is proposed. Uh, after searching the after searching the optimal architecture parameters, a divide uh, stage is, is proposed. When the as a root value for the embedding dimension uh, for the embedding parameters is smaller than a predefined threshold, all the all the elements in the embedding table will, will be set to zero so that the embedding dimension can be can be reduced. For the low base embedding search methods, um, it is brought the optimal embedding dimension for a group of feature values. So it reduced the search space. Uh, in, um, in comparison with the column-based methods, the low-based embedding search methods uh, conducts to truly saving the memory because the feature values within a group can be assigned with a same embedding dimension. So we can see that the column base and uh, the low base methods will make different assumptions to reduce the search, search space from different perspective. So uh, a simple idea is to combine these two methods to reduce the, uh, reduce the sub, uh, search space and then improve the search efficiency. Uh, by doing this, the search space is no longer with the uh, number of feature values or the predefined embedding size. They they will divide the, the original embedding into the several sub-dimensions. Besides, the similar feature will be grouped into different feature groups, and a global embedding dimension will be assigned to each group. Uh, auto theme is belongs to this category, uh, which is published in the WWW 2021. Uh, from the column-wise perspective, uh, it first uh, predefine several sub-dimensions, uh, just like the auto-embedding. And from the low-wise perspective, it sets the number of groups as one, and then search a global embedding dimension for all the feature values within this field, which just like the SSEDS. And the goal of this methods is to select the optimal embedding dimension for different feature fields. Uh, AutoDIM is a two-stage framework. Uh, during, the first uh, during the first state, dimensionality search state, it aims to uh, find the optimal embedding dimension for each feature field. And for the second stage, parameter retraining stage, it, it is designed to select the optimal embedding dimension and then retrain the, uh, retrain the model parameters. Uh, just like the ESAPN, it first predefines several candidate sub-dimension and a transformation layer, a batch normalization layer is used to map the embedding into the same dimension and unify the scale. So after this operation, we can achieve uh, several uh, transform embedding and this embedding will be fed into the MLP. Then a gumbo somax trick is used uh, with uh, some architecture permit parameters. With this uh, architecture parameters, the transform embedding will be uh, will be witty summed by these uh, architectural parameters and then form the final representation. And this representation will be fed into the MLP for, uh, for the final result. The architectural weight in the gumbo somax function will optimize upon the validation data set and the other models parameters, including this MLP and the embedding table are learned upon the training data set. After the searching stage, a parameter retraining stage will be decided, and the optimal embedding with the largest weight is selected for each feature field, just like this. And, uh, and with this, the largest weight, uh, the model's parameters uh, can be retrained to attempt the final model. Besides, NIS also reduced the space, uh, also reduced the space uh, from both row-wise and the column-wise perspective. Uh, it also claimed that for the head features with more data and more information, using a larger embedding dimension is reasonable because it can uh, improve the performance uh, due to 
a larger mo model. And for the tail features with less data and less information, assigning a smaller embedding dimension is enough because it can uh, prevent the model from overfitting. Uh, NIS is a IO-based solution. It first divides the original embedding table into several uh, embedding blocks, and it decides two modes. Uh, the first is single-side embedding mode, and the second is the multi-side embedding mode. And the controller learns to sample the embedding dimension uh, that can generate a higher re reward. Uh, for the single-side embedding mode, the controller will make, a one, uh, make one choice by sample a pair from the search space, uh, which, will, will, which will form their representation. And for the multi-site embedding mode, uh, the controller may, will make a sequence of choices. Uh, we can see that uh, the, uh, the final representation will be, in, uh, will be concatting all the embedding blocks and the controller will receive the reward returned from the main, the main model based on the validation data set. And the reward uh, not only consider the optimization uh, objective, but also the training cost. Uh, in summary, for the column and low base embedding search methods, uh, although it is theoretically optimal, optimal to search the, search the suitable embedding dimension for each feature value, it poses great challenges to, to the efficient search algorithm. Uh, instead, uh, shaking the search space in an appropriate manner may result in a better performance. Uh, we can reduce the search space from the row-wise and the column-wise perspective, which uh, contributes to reducing the search space and achieving a better result. And we can see that the evolution of the search space is from detail to abstract, which can lead to a higher efficiency. Besides searching the embedding dimension uh, for each features, another approach is learning the embedding uh, via the combination. Uh, the above mentions are the automatic based uh, methods designed for the categorical, uh, categorical features. Uh, besides, automatic based solution also can be designed for the numerical features, uh, and AutoDisk is belongs to these groups. Uh, the existing methods for the numerical feature representation learning have some limitations, which can be grouped into the several categories. The first one is the uh, they they leverage the original value or their transformation form uh, without learning the embedding vectors, which will result in low capacity and the poor compatibility. And the second one is uh, the field embedding. Uh, it learns a single uniform field specific embedding vectors, and it will share by all the values within this field. It also suffers from the low, low capacity. And, and the last one is the discretization, which is one of the most important and popular methods. It converts the original uh, numerical feature into the categorical one by some predefined discretization rule or some perf, uh, per, or some per, per trend, uh, models. However, it also suffers from some uh, uh, some disadvantages. The first one is the two-phase problem because the discretization process cannot be optimized with the model training uh, pr process. Uh, besides, it also suffer from uh, the SVD and the D DBS problem. In order to uh, overcome this problem, AutoDisk is proposed, which is a numerical feature embedding learning framework with high model capacity, end-to-end -end training, and a unique representation. It consists of three uh, modules. The first one is the meta embedding, uh, which is decide uh, a set of meta embedding for each feature field. This meta embedding will be shared by all the feature values within a feature field. It, 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 is, uh, it is used to learn a global knowledge about the feature field. The second one is a differentiable auto discretization module. It, it, Act as a controller to catch the correlation between each numerical feature and the meta embeddings. This controller will uh, fed the numerical feature into the MLP and then output the selection weights. Based on the selection weight, an uh, aggregation function module is leveraged to, uh, to merge the meta embedding with the selection weight and then output the final representation for each numerical features. Finally, I will make a conclusion. Uh, we can see that from the search space perspective, uh, the existing AutoML-based solution for the, uh, for the embedding component 
the search, the search space uh, is evolution from the detail to the abstract. The, uh, the full embedding dimension search with the largest in, uh, search space. However, uh, because the search space is very hard, uh, very huge, so it is uh, hard to satisfy. Uh, uh, it is hard to search a satisfy uh, satisfy result. So, in order to reduce the search space, uh, several methods are proposed, uh, including the uh, column based method or the row based method. They make different assumptions to avoid searching in such huge space. Uh, uh, including dividing the original embedding dimension into several sub dimensions or grouping the uh, similar feature into the feature groups. Um, from the search algorithm uh, perspective, uh, gradient based search algorithm is one of the most important and the most popular methods because it can achieve an efficient re result. Mm, that's all. Here is the here is the uh, introduction for the embedding component. The next part is the automatic feature interaction part, which will be presented by uh, Doctor uh, Rui Mingtang after the coffee break. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, see you after the coffee break. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm Tang Rui Ming from Huawei Nosak Research Lab. And in the afternoon, I will continue starting from the second part. And I will introduce uh, interaction. I will, I will introduce some automatic approaches uh, to search for interaction components in deep recommend system, which consists of three different topics, feature interaction search, interaction function search, and the interaction block search. Okay, so I think this figure has been shown many times. And in a deep recommender system, we have three different layers, uh, input feature layer, uh, feature embedding layer, and the feature interaction layer. And in this section, we will focus on this feature interaction layer. As we know, uh, in fact, effectively modeling feature interaction is very important. And here give some examples of low order and high order feature interactions. But unfortunately, most of these feature interactions are hidden in the data. So it would be very difficult to identify such as diaper and the uh, beer rule. So we need some algorithms, some models to identify such infective feature interactions. But it is very challenging to model the feature interaction uh, effectively. Firstly, if we try to enumerate all the feature interactions, then it would be it would need very large memory and a computational cost. And uh, therefore, it would be very difficult to extend to high order feature interactions. And it would include a lot of uh, useless and noisy interaction. If we try to avoid enumerate all the feature interactions, then we need to require some human effort to identify important feature interactions, which means we need high label, high label cost, and uh, uh, we have to take the risk of missing some very important but counterintuitive interactions. And the more heavily, more, moreover, even if we already identify some feature interaction, and we have to select proper feature interaction functions for each of such useful interactions. And again, this needs some more human expert knowledge because the number of feature interaction is very huge. So normally it would be almost impossible to develop unique different interaction functions for different interactions. So there are three different topics in this part, inter feature interaction search, it means we have a lot of different feature interactions, which are the beneficial ones. We want to identify such beneficial ones and the filter useless ones. And the second topic is interaction, sorry. Second topic is interaction function search. So later we will see that different feature interactions, they have, the, they have different natures. So it would be not very reasonable to represent such feature interactions using the same function. So, but how to find, how to search proper interaction functions for different interactions, it would be a very large search space. 
and we need to define proper search space and proper search algorithm to find proper interaction function for each individual interaction. And because the first two categories, the method belong to these first two category, um, normally they have a very large search space. So the third group <coughs> would take the whole feature interact, uh, the whole feature representation as a whole. So they try to build interaction functions on the whole feature interaction to shrink the search space and which may become more efficient than first two category. Let's view them one by one. So firstly, we will look at the work in the category of feature interaction search. We want to search beneficial interactions. And the first work uh, I'm going to view today is called Autofeeds, which is published in KDD 2020. The motivation of this paper is that the authors find that not all the feature interactions are useful and uh, some of them are noisy. So the goal is to find such noisy interactions and try to filter them. And uh, the range, the domain of this paper try to focus on, they focus on some models, so-called factorization models. So these three different uh, instance uh, fac factorization models. They try to list and enumerate all the second order feature interactions and uh, also using some other tech architectures to combine these feature interactions. So the question is, are, are these feature interactions are all necessary? The answer actually is no. So, there are two stages in, in this work. The first one is called search stage. Search stage tries to detect all the useful feature interactions. The second stage is called the retrain stage. Try to retrain the model with the selected feature interaction. Okay, so let's see the search stage. Actually, it is very simple. The basic idea is that firstly, I try to enumerate all the feature interactions and for each, each of them, I assign a gate operation. So if the gate is connected, that means the corresponding feature interaction is useful. Otherwise, the, that means the corresponding feature interaction is useless. So this is a zero one binary choice, which is not differentiable. So in order to make it differentiable, we try to model the probability of such gate to be connected. And um, also use, also the model uses some uh, training tricks like batch normalization and the GRD optimizer to get some uh, stable and sparse um, architecture parameters, which means there will be a lot of gate parameters will be zero and only the useful ones will be, will be retained. And after the first stage, all the gate with zero parameters are already filled away and the whole model is retrained with the left feature interactions. But the limitation is very obvious, is that you have to enumerate all the feature interaction beforehand, then, then you, you, you can do the checking one by one. This method is almost impossible to be applied in high order, in high order scenarios because the space would be very large. And uh, a second word is called auto group is proposed also in the same year. And uh, in order to avoid enumerate all the feature interactions, this work proposed a method to generate some feature groups directly, such that the feature interaction within this feature group are effective. And the interactions across different groups are effective and can be filtered away safely. And how, how do they do that? Okay. This stage is called the feature grouping stage. And uh, as you can, you, the feature grouping stage tries to select, try to assign some, or try to create some feature groups. And uh, the aim of this uh, stage is to find some useful features for each feature group. And uh, this problem can be viewed as uh, edging, edge selecting in the bipartite graph. So one kind of node is feature are uh, features, and the other kind of nodes are 
groups. So we want to find some mappings between the features and the groups. And again, this is a, as, as we can see, this again is a structural optimization problem, right? We want to find some corresponding edges. And for this binary zero and one choices, again, it is not differentiable. So this work try to model the probability of the existence of these edges. And uh, in order to make this probability less biased, so the Gumball softmax are used. So we try to know what is the probability of the edge ex existence in the bipartite graph. And uh, we model this existence of probability using another set of parameters alpha. And these trainable parameters are trained alternatively with the other parameters of the neural network. So in the inference stage, if the probability of that edge is larger than 0 0.5, then this edge will be selected. Otherwise, this edge will be removed. So with the edges selected or removed, then the feature groups are already generated. So in the next stage, we try to model the feature interactions within each group. And inspired, of, inspired by factorization machine, we propose this formula here. Uh, sorry, the laser does not work. Okay, here. So actually the, the feature interaction within this group is modeled by the P power of the sum of the features minus, minus the sum of the P power of the features. So if the, P, if the P value equals to two, then it is the factorization machine. If P is larger than two, of course we have to take some unnecessary terms, but we still use this formula because it's highly efficient to compute. Okay, so for each feature uh, group set, we, we have this formula to model the feature interaction. So the feature group work can solve the problem of generating high order feature interactions efficiently. But unfortunately, it has another drawback. We find that the auto group ignore this property called order priority property. What does it mean? It means that the high order feature interaction quality can be relevant to their degenerated low order ones. What does it mean? It means it is almost highly impossible to generate some high order feature interactions with high quality from low order feature interactions with low quality. That means garbage in, garbage is in, garbage is out. Okay. Okay, so this, this property is found by, by this work. It is called FIVE, okay, which is published in, in one year later in KDD. And uh, this figure, uh, this work tries to treat the original uh, features as a feature graph and then model the high order feature interactions by the multi-layer convolutional of GNN. Then the problem of finding infective feature interactions is equivalent to find the optimal adjacent matrix for each order. And this work tries to define this operation. It is a graph convolutional operator. And for each case layer, the node representation is equal equals to the node representation at at the, la at the previous layer integrated with the neighbors in the current layer. And uh, following this definition, they can prove that the node representation at the case layer corresponding to the generated K plus one order feature interaction. Okay, so with this proof, they can, they can perform convolutional network, convolutional operator in the graph safely. Okay, so just now I said the task of generating useful interaction, feature interactions is equivalent to learn an optimal adjacent matrix. So they try to do such a problem called edge matching, edge searching, sorry. So now they have two set of parameters. The first set is the original parameter of the neural network. The other one is the, uh, the other set of parameter is the adjacent matrix. And then these two set of parameters are again 
they are optimized by in a bi-level optimization way. And again, because this um, adjacency metric search is a zero one binary search, again, it is not differentiable. So they try to relax this constraint to a soft version and to make the problem differentiable. Okay, so I have reviewed three works in the feature interaction search. And uh, this category tries to focus on the beneficial searching for beneficial low order and the high order feature interactions, but the efficiency of searching high order feature interaction is very important. So some works try to focus on the efficiency issue and they propose some method to reduce the search space, such as feature grouping and the, feed, and the graph aggregation, etc. So as the second part is, it is called interaction function search. The first categories of works already identify useful feature interactions, but is inspired or, or observed by some previous work, they find that different feature interactions, they are in different degree of information. So we may need different neural architectures to model different feature interactions, like give you one, some example. Okay, this is the first work in this category is called SIF published in 2020 W3. Okay, they are working in a very simple setting. It is called collaborative filtering or matrix factorization. So it is a very simple model that we have embeddings for user and embeddings for product or embeddings for item. And the, the relationship or the relevance between these two uh, user and an item is measured by the inner product between the two vectors, right? This is a standard operation. But the authors of this paper, they find that there are a lot of works try to test different operators. Like for instance, there are some inner product. This is plus, minus, max, mean concatenation. They find that different operators, actually they have different, they win different games at different test data set, which means different, there's no global uh, operators, which is always win across different data set. So which motivates this work? Maybe we need to search different interaction functions given different data sets. Okay, so their work proposed a very, uh, a very simple method. They find or they define the search space, okay? Different operators. And they try to combine the result of different operators with the gate parameter or the weight parameter. And this weight parameter again is learnable. So in the end, we only filter the operators with low weight and we keep the operators with high weight. So for different data set, we have different such alpha values. So the functions will be different. But in the previous work, they only work for the metric, metric factorization. So there's no set of information, but in recommended system scenario, there will be a rich set of uh, side information. So how do we do that? So this work is also published in 2020. So as you can see, there's a lot of papers published in 2000, 2020, 2021. And this work observed that not all the useful feature interactions can be modeled by the same interaction functions. So they, this work, they do a very detailed design for each of such feature interactions we use a subnetwork to design or to define their interaction relationship. And uh, to shrink the search space, they predefine some operators here, like the plus, concatenation, inner product, outer product, et cetera. And uh, they try to design this goal. Is, uh, the, the goal of this work is try to find a proper network for each of the feature interactions such that the overall performance is optimized. Okay, so how do they do that? The, the searching algorithm in this paper is like 
uh, evolutionary style. So they try to know beforehand which art which architectures are good and which architectures are bad. So we need a classifier to do that. And uh, initially, maybe we can sample a set of architectures and a test on a validation set. We get the performance, right? And then we can uh, encode the architecture into a string using some existing approach. And um, we do a testing. If this is in this work, they, they train a naive Bayes tree. The working process is as follows. If an architecture is above a threshold, then we go left, otherwise we go right. And then this process is repeated several times and we have this tree structure, okay? So better ones always go left and the worse ones always go right. That means the leftmost leaf node contains the best performance, the best performed models. And in the contrary, the leftmost node, they include all the worst performed models, right? And in the next round, we want to do some exploration. And uh, which part should we explore? The intuition is that we should spend more energy on the best performed area, right? And uh, we shouldn't, but we should not uh, ignore, totally ignore the worst performed ones. So we do, we use a sampling method is called the Chinese restaurant process, but this method is replaceable. So the intuition here is that we, we assign a higher probability to the left node and a lower probability to a right node. And so in the next round, firstly, we decide which leaf node we want to explore. And then we, we generate a new architecture in this corresponding leaf node. But the problem is that how can we make sure in the next round, the generated architecture belong to a given leaf node. Of course, um, naive approach is that we can do some random generation and do the testing. If the generated architecture is not in the corresponding leaf node, then we can do the generation again, but this is very inefficient. So another approach is proposed. Sorry. Okay. So here, we select the best performing, the best perform the two architectures in the corresponding leaf node and do some mutation and crossover and generate a new architecture, which is very similar to the architectures in this leaf node. So we hopefully we think there's a very high chance that the generated architecture is in the corresponding leaf node. Okay, so the overall performance is summarized here. We have, uh, we have Given a set of architectures and their corresponding accuracy, we built a leaf node, we built a tree, and according to their performance, we sample a uh, we sample leaf node. So given this leaf node, we create a new architecture and we test its performance and add this performance and the architecture into the population again. And hopefully after several rounds, the Accurate, the overall accuracy of this population would be higher and higher. Okay. But the interaction function of the SIF and the auto feature the previous two works are artificially designed. So which require domain knowledge. And in this work, try to, try to use a more smart way to do that. Again, it tried Firstly, the authors of this paper tried to view some existing works, and uh, these are all the very popular mainstream CTR models, right? And, and uh, they analyzed their interaction functions, and uh, they proved that all the interaction function can be abstracted in this format. So there is a learnable matrix W here, and this W is uh, different for different pairs of feature field. So this W is learnable. Okay, so the search space becomes very small. You only need to learn a good W matrix, that's all, for different pairs of feature interactions. And um, uh, a small trick here is that they use a gate operator when fields different pairs of feature interactions like auto fees.
Okay. Okay. So to summarize the second category, which is interaction function search, although the although we when we search for appropriate uh, interaction functions for different fish interactions, the accuracy can be highly improved, but the search space is very large, so it cannot be normally um, uh, applied in the high order interaction function scenarios. But if we use the generalized interaction function search approach, approach like the third work does, then it will be slightly better because we can, it can be more efficient than searching the human design search space. But still, it is very highly uh, time consuming. So which motivates the third category? The third category is called the interaction block search. And the, the previous two works try to model the relationship between different features, right? And the third category concat all the feature interact of all the feature representation as a unique vector. And we this kind of work try to model the feature interaction over this unique or this uniform vector directly. Let's look at how it does. And the first work here is called the auto CTR. And it designs a hierarchical search space. And the interblock search space is try to observe what are the blocks are there. And according to the properties they define called uh, functional complementary and the complexity of well uh, principle, they define three different blocks. The first one is MLP block. The second one is dot product block. The third one is FM block. And uh, as an inner search space, which is intra block, they search for the uh, hyperparameter within each block. Let me give you one example. So in this example, as you can see, they combine all the feature vectors into a unique vector. And in this, in this example, all the dense features are sent into MLP and all the sparse feature embeddings are sent into dot product block and the FM block at the same time. And for the higher layer, the FM block takes the input from the MLP, from the dot product, and from the original dense feature. And for the MLP, it takes the input from the dot product. Okay, so this is like a, a local game and try to combine different uh, blocks and try to find uh, a very good performed architectures. And the search algorithm in this work is also an evolutionary search algorithm. Initially, we have a set of random generated architectures and the, the corresponding accuracy. And the next, uh, we select some good perform good perform the populations based on several criteria like their age, like their accuracy and their complexity. We get a new population called the survivors. And based on survivors, we select we select one, we select the top architecture, which is called parent. And uh, the selection algorithm is called bank-based sampling. How, how do we do that? We, we rank all the population here based on their accuracy. And uh, for the uh, architecture with good accuracy, we give a higher probability to be sampled and the bad ones we give lower probability to be sampled. So we sample uh, an architecture according to the probability, uh, which is the parent. And after that, we generate some neighbors run by doing some random operation from this parent architecture. Then we generate a set of neighbors. And uh, how do we decide the final, the final, the final candidate? Uh, and a uh, naive approach is we directly test their performance, right? But this may not be very efficient. So this work, they train a guider to predict their performance. And this guider is trained 
based on the um, uh, observed architectures and their corresponding accuracy. Okay. So the last one in this category is called uh, auto PI. And this figure is already very popular in the NAS papers. Okay. So there are some uh, node and there are some edges and, and there are some connections. And we want to search for the existence of such edges. And this paper, this work, they have two, they have very two special cells. The first one is called interaction cell. The second one is called ensemble cell. And the interaction cell formulates the high order feature interactions. And this cell, the, the details is here. And the input of this cell is the original embedding and the output of this cell is the high order features. And uh, there are some internal nodes here represent the intermediate representation of the features after some operation. And uh, for the ensemble cell, the purpose of this cell is try to ensemble the low order and the high order feature interactions. So the input of this cell consists of two parts. The first part is high order feature interactions, which is generated from the interaction cell. The other part of the input is the original embedding. And the output of this cell is the ensembled features. Again, there are some internal nodes here represent the intermediate, re the intermediate representation of the features. So the search space they define would be uh, also a two level search space. The first search space is that for each edge, we have to determine whether this edge exists or not. So whether this edge is existing. And the second level of such space is that if this edge exists, what is the most suitable operation operator in this edge? Okay. So uh, after defining this search space, also an, an differentiable optive function is proposed to optimize this set of operations. Okay, to summarize the interaction block search. Modeling the high order feature interaction is very inefficient, but this category of work try to combine all the feature representation as a whole and try to model the feature interaction directly on these unique or these uniform feature representations. So this would be significantly improve the efficiency of the search algorithms. So that means in the future, in order to accelerate the automail training process, this may be a very good trend to, to design some search space. And in the last slides in this of this component, we list all the works in this uh, section. There are some works in the feature interaction category. There are some works in the interaction function category. There are some works in the interaction block category. And uh, we also list the search space and the order and the search algorithm here. And as we can see that in the search algorithm part, there are a lot of different search algorithms, but due to the efficiency issue, still the gradient-based search algorithm take the dominant position in, in, in this part. Okay. So I will leave the next uh, part of this tutorial to Mr. Ye Jing. Okay. And the next uh, I will introduce um, the the uh, deep, uh, the automated model model training and uh, comprehensive and first sorry first um let me define these two part an uh, automated machine learning for model training mainly focus on searching the architectures related to to model training such as loss function as visualized. And comprehensive search means an approach that search for several parts at the same time. As, um, as we previously introduced, um, if a work, for example, if a work search for the an embedding size and the inter interaction functions uh, at the same time, then it is a comprehensive work. 
comprehensive search work. And I, I will first introduce uh, works for the automated model training. And first, I want to share auto loss. Well, uh, most existing deep recommend systems uh, adopted a, a predefined loss, just as visualized, uh, or they will fix, uh, or will, they will fix multiple losses by um, simply by weighted sum or ex exhaustively and manually search for the, the first loss. And this process is rather uh, rather time and. Uh, um, uh, is very time consuming and uh, requires lo a lot of expert knowledge as well as uh, labor effort. So this work aims to searching for the optimal loss function and it considers different con convergence behaviors of data samples. And here is a framework of auto loss. I first introduced the forward propagation process. It could, uh, it could, it could, uh, it could be divided into four steps. And the, the first step, in the first step, the deep recommend systems uh, will make the prediction, and in the in the in the second step, we calculate all of the candidate um, candidate losses. Just as here, and at the third, third, at the third step, we the controller will uh, generate a weight of these different loss candidates, and uh, at the last step, we co uh, we calculating the overall losses by um, by weighted sum, and combining these two parts together. And uh, the second part of auto loss is uh, is back. Back, backward um, propagation. And uh, there are two sets of parameters should be optimized. And uh, the parameters for deep recommend system and the uh, um, parameters for controller. Um, to be specific, an uh, auto loss alternatively update two sets of parameters. That's to say, we first uh, um, update the deep recommendation parameters based on the training, training an uh, error on the training data, and while with the controller fixed, and uh, then we fix the deep recommend system parameters and update the controller parameters based on the validation error. This alternate alternatively training um, strategy could help to avoid the overfitting problem. And the next, uh, I want to do auto loss train. An um, existing loss function, an uh, automated machine learning works for um, loss functions, mainly focus on, um, uh, mainly focus on combining different losses and the sound. Uh, some effective loss functions as MSE loss is de designed by human hum export. Uh, this kind of handcrafted losses uh, takes a significant expertise and efforts. So to generate the loss function, um, this work is pro um, proposed. It will generate some useful loss functions based on just based on the basic mathematical uh, operations. And the search, uh, the search space of auto loss string, uh, as we just said, uh, is consi uh, consists of several uh, basic operations like add and uh, uh, max and this an uh, identical log like this. And to generate a loss, um, and to gen generate to generate the final loss function, auto loss string adopts a uh, iron to as the controller. Um, it first generates the uh, um, operation it will use, and then it generates the corresponding positions as the input. Uh, note that for the operators that require to input, it will generate two positions as the input. And also, um, the, first, uh, the, the first three input, uh, or, uh, the first three of the variable set is fixed. Uh, as the initial states, uh, which 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 stands for the prediction, the ground truth, and the um, and the co uh, constant uh, re respectively, 
And this process visualized uh, how, how we could generate the MSE loss by an uh, auto loss drain, like this. And auto loss drain is uh, finished uh, in the training of automated, uh, uh, automated model training by three phases. In the first phases, it's, uh, it's searched for the loss function by reinforcement learning. Well, um, the detailed steps is as visualized. Um, first, if gen the controller RN um, will generate the loss function candidates as we just uh, introduced, then it will check the, whether the formula uh, makes sense. And sometimes we may, uh, we may generate a formula that is not related to our prediction or is not related to the ground truth. And in this case, the loss, the generated loss function is not, uh, does not make sense. So in step two, we will check for this. And this is called the proxy te test in the, uh, in the paper. And then the, gener the gener generated uh, loss functions are evaluate evaluated by one, one short training. That's to say, we have an original recommended system model. Then we have the generated loss. We just uh, update the, this uh, recommended system model for one, for one epoch, and we could got, got a, get a reward. Well, this reward is computed, computed as um, the improvement of the uh, one-shot uh, training. And in, the, uh, and in the end, the RN is updated in phase one. And after phase one, uh, we check the gradient in phase two. And it is not it is not the same as the proxy test that we conducted in the first phase. And in this phase, we, we do not check the formula, but we check the gradient of the generated loss function. That's to say, we want to, fig we want to figure out whether the generated loss could help our, uh, our, our prediction to approximate the ground truth. Uh, if it optimize the system to the other direction, which we remove this candidate loss function. And in the last phase, we just uh, train uh, um, uh, our recommended system model to converge with our generated loss. And besides the loss function, researchers, researchers also have noticed this, uh, some other parts of model training, such as an um, auto FT, Auto FT could help to um, help to tackle the overfitting problem by deciding whether some parts of pre-trained model should be frozen in the fine tuning when transfer to when transfer to when transfer the pre-trained model to uh, another uh, apply application scenery. And Auto FT searches for two parts of parameters. Um, field-wise parameters and layer-wise parameters. Well, the, uh, the field-wise um, parameters contain, contains uh, an embedding parameters for different features, while the, la the, the layer-wise um, parameters include all other um, parameters for model, model prediction. And uh, during the search, um, the selection of pre-trained or Fine tune is controlled by a gate. Well, well, it is um, this gate um, is is controlled by a gumbo soft max, so that this frame, this framework is um, is an is an end to end model, and we just uh, optimize it by gradient descent. Now we summarize the uh, automate uh, model training for deep recommend systems. We could see that these two loss-based optimization methods could have, um, facilitate our uh, the, uh, the convergence of recommendation models and could help to um, help to improve the model performance. And also, from loss functions to the parameter tuning, researchers are gradually realizing more flexible and efficiency methodologies and the search spaces for the model training process. Next, I want to introduce works, works for comprehensive search. And the first work I want to introduce is AIM. It is the extension of auto fees. And 
we just introduced in auto automated machine learning for future interaction search. In AIM, also search for three parts of deep recommend systems, future interaction, future, future interaction function, and embedding dimension. In general, AIM utilized utilizes gates to control all the model architecture and is optimized by gradient. Um, to be specific, whether a gate will, will be open um, or not is dep uh, depends on the contribution of the corresponding model architecture to the final prediction. And uh, here we introduce the space, space search spaces for three uh, for, for, three, for, three, for three, three parts. The first is the future interaction. For the future interaction, in order to search high order interactions, ARM progressively enlarges the interaction set. For the piece order, um, it only searches the interaction of the previous order, um, P minus one, and the first order futures rather than elaborate all possible interactions like P minus two and the second order. AIM further selects the interaction function and, and it is based on the previous future interaction search, search spaces. And there are two changes for interaction function search. The first is that there are K interaction function, functions candidate and it, they are applied for um, every future inter interaction and to find the optimal ones. And the second one is that for every interaction, we could say that in it input, uh, input different future embeddings, um, EIK and EJK. Um, it is named the function-wise embedding in, in the paper. And the last for the embedding dimension search, it is different for uh, it. Uh, it is different for the search and the retraining. During the search, the position information is uh, is reserved um, is preserved since the position also re somehow reflects uh, the effect on the prediction. And that's to say, we wonder which um, embedding dimensions. Uh, are redundant rather than how many how many uh, embedding dimensions are uh, redundant and for uh, for for the retraining to get the corresponding sizes uh, embedding sizes we just uh, convert this um, this prompting embeddings with in position information to a fixed uh, to a fixed uh, an int integers as the uh, embedding size. And uh, overall, AIM is uh, conducted in three steps. Uh, it first finds the optimal future interactions and the interaction functions to fix the model architecture. And with the search architecture, AIM further obtain the optimal embedding dimension and finally construct reach and retrain the recommendation model, like this process. And, and Using gates to search multiple components for deep recommend assistance may neglect the dependency between the model and between the model and model architectures, these different architectures. Auto IAS further pro uh, proposes a progressive sampling strategy to generate the whole recommend, uh, um, recommendation model and consider the, their uh, interdependencies. <laughs> this work searches for five parts of the deep recommend system, including embedding size, projection size, future interaction, interaction function, and the multi-layer perceptions and struct uh, structures. And in general, this framework is optimized by knowledge distillation together with reinforcement learning. And to be specific, there are six search spaces. The first space S1 consists of several integers as the candidates for embedding size, while for the projection, for the projection size, which is a unified, uh, unif unified dimension for future interaction, the second space S2 is some other integers.
for future interaction, auto IAS considers raw, raw futures and all uh, second order interactions. In other words, it searches for <laughs> It searches for the first order and for uh, for and and first order futures. It search for um, either uh, uh, first order futures together with all possible second order interactions. The whole search space, the size of the whole search, uh, the space three is n plus a uh, combination of n two. For the interaction search. S4 consists of four popular candidates, namely product, concatenate, concatenate, element wise plus, and the maximum. Um, and to search for the optimal multi layer perceptual structures, auto IAS suggests that low, low and the high order futures should not be considered as, uh, at the same time. And that's to say, they should not. Uh, it, it is not. Uh, it is not reasonable to input all of them as a beginning of uh, begin uh, as a begin uh, as a as the first layer of multi layer perception. So, the an uh, auto IS searches for the index of an input layer in uh, S five here S five where L is a fixed number and also search for the output dimension for each layers and. Um, here is an example for and to search for and uh, for the multi-layer perception for a, sp a specific future interaction. And in this example, this interaction is input to uh, is input as a second layer of linear transformation, where the output dimension is three. To generate the whole recommendation model from different search spaces, auto IAS samples action one after another. For, uh, for every sample, sample steps, an um, auto IAS considers all previous um, sampled actions to explicitly model the dependency between uh, different components. And the, the reward function is set as the difference of the current AUC score and the history average AUC score bar tall. And uh, as, uh, as aforementioned before, as mentioned before, auto IAS is optimized by knowledge distillation together with reinforcement learning. And knowledge distillation here is served as a soft parameter sharing strategy. To be specific, auto IAS is optimized in three steps. At first, the, la a large, the largest, uh, um, the largest, uh, the largest network is trained as a teacher uh, network by uh, by the general cross entropy loss, um, general cross entropy loss. Then, auto IAS samples serve uh, several architecture as a, as a student network and the train. It by the um, by a combination of um, traditional um, cross entropy loss and the um, this uh, knowledge distillation loss, and at last, uh, based on the reward function and from the generated student network, uh, the controller is updated by the policy gradient, and previous. Previously, we introduced the AIM and the auto IAS. Both of the uh, both of them neglect the important part of deep recommend assistance, sequ and sequential uh, sequential futures. And the last work I want to introduce is a AMEIR, which takes um, which takes uh, which takes uh, and sequential futures into um, consideration. And also suggests that deep recommendation model could be divided into three parts: <coughs> behavior modeling, behavior modeling for the sequential futures, and future interaction for non-sequential futures, and the multi-layer perceptual components. Plus, 
Uh, existing multi uh, deep recommend systems are hard to suit all scenarios, and the search space of previous automated uh, recommend systems are restricted. For these reasons, authors propose uh, this work to adaptively search for uh, this race part and uh, achieve an adaptive model. In this paper, the whole search space um, co correspondingly consists of three steps, uh, three subspaces. And the first is uh, the first is a subspace for behavior modeling. And in this subspace, authors aim to search for L blocks. Uh, L is a predefined hyperparameter. The, uh, the structure of a specific block is visualized in the right uh, in, in this right uh, graph. The, uh, the computation uh, and the computation, uh, it mainly consists of three components, uh, layer, opera uh, layer opera uh, normalization, layer operation, and the activation. And uh, the detail of the formula is listed under this field. For, for the first subspaces, uh, the candidates of these three uh, functions are predefined, just as uh, listed. And for example, to form a computation block, we could select a convolution, select a convolutional um, a network as a layer operation, um, and a and a relu as the activation function. And without without the um, without the normalization, the input. Sorry. And. The second search subspace is in interaction exploration. In fact, AMEIR fixes the interaction function as a Hardman uh, product and all, only searches for the following activation and, and only searches for the future interaction candidates. Uh, for the third search space, this paper searches for the output dimension of each linear transformation and the following activation function. The, out, uh, the, output, the output dimension should um, the output dimension should be a portion uh, of the input dimension, and similar to the uh, search, uh, subspace one, uh, the, the active the activation function candidates is listed, which is also predefined. The overall search space of e AMEIR is one short random search. And specifically, AMEIR search for uh, ho the host recommend system in three steps. The first step is search for behavior modeling blocks for sequential futures. With only select uh, with only sequential futures input, AMEIR evaluates the performance of search that, uh, such architecture with a predefined multi-layer perception. And the sec second step is searching for future interaction. And the, the strategy of this step is combination for, of uh, one short random search and uh, sequential model based optimization. In other words, future interaction, sorry, future interaction, uh, Future, in, future interaction is pre, um, progr progressively enlarged during, uh, during the search, uh, search phase and the final performance is also um, evaluated by um, another multi-layer perception different to with the step one. And in, the st uh, and in st step three, to find the optimal multi-layer perception structures, um, and AMEIR pre-allocates a weight matrix with the maximum dimension for each layer and select a pyramid sub, sub, sub matrix according to and search the dimension for final architecture. To sum up this note, we could find that existing comprehensive search methods mainly focus on future embedding and future interaction. And while some other works uh, also consider the multi-layer perception structures for the final prediction. And, and some other parts such as sequential future modeling 
and get a few gets a few uh, attention. And in addition, the search space is very large for comprehensive search since it usually consists multiple components. And so efficient search strategy are usually adopted. And such, uh, for example, uh, in, the, in the introduced works, uh, gradient descent based method and uh, um, policy gradient based reinforcement learning together with the one shot random search is uh, are, are adopted. And next, um, Dr. Wen Qi Fan will conclude our tutorial and give some future directions. So uh, this is the last section of today's tutorial. Uh, in this uh, in this session, uh, we will uh, uh, we will summarize uh, uh, our tutorial and share some uh, potential uh, future directions in this hot topic. Okay, uh, from our uh, previous introduction by our colleagues, uh, we know that the AutoML can improve the performance of deep recommender systems in a data-driven way. And most existing AutoML-based recommendation methods focus on uh, searching optimal uh, embedding components for better uh, feature representation and uh, searching appropriate deep networks to capture uh, feature interactions. They also decide uh, model training process and comprehensive system architectures uh, to better improve the recommendations. So uh, by introducing uh, AutoML into deep recommender systems, we can automatically decide different models according to different data. And this in this can improve the prediction performance and our model generalizations. Besides, it's helpful to eliminate the negative impacts from our human bias and errors. And it also can significantly reduce our human's ties and efforts. And this slide uh, shows the uh, main trends of uh, most existing AutoML enhanced recommendations. As we can see, most existing AutoML-based works are developed from single components to the multiple uh, component joint search. At the same time, the searching space of these AutoML-based works develops from the details for, uh, to abstract for reducing searching space and improving the searching uh, efficiencies. In addition, uh, most existing uh, searching algorithms are mainly based on the gradient-based uh, methods. It can uh, provide efficient model search and training mode. At first, uh, let's uh, briefly, uh, look at, uh, briefly uh, look at the summarize of, uh, for the feature uh, uh, selection uh, methods. And most existing works are embed uh, methods for feature selections, since it's easier for this kind of uh, methods for formulate the feature selection problem and we change the, uh, the recommendation model. In addition, uh, a few words are proposed to the feature network selection, which uh, might be uh, potential directions for improve, improving the efficiency, e eff effectiveness of uh, feature selection methods. And for the uh, score uh, ring function uh, methods, uh, URV attributes uh, continuous, uh, con uh, continuous scores for features, such as the AU, C score and the binary values. Uh, this can not be avoid the contribution of redundant features uh, during the search and, and it can lead to a suboptimal results. So how to effectively generate and select, uh, combine notorial features and safe uh, memory usage is an urgent problem for our academia and industry. As for the feature embedding parts, and depending on the uh, search space, existing methods can be grouped into some uh, categories, uh, including the uh, full embedding search, 
uh, column-based uh, embedding search, row-based embedding search, and column and row-based embedding search, as well as the uh, combination uh, embedding search. We can see that the, the, the search uh, space on automated feature embedding search also developed from the detailed space to abstract space. And full embedding search uh, methods aims to search the optimal embedding dimension for each uh, feature value, facing the huge in, uh, searching space. So uh, to reduce this uh, search space, column-based, uh, row-based, as well as uh, column and row-based uh, methods can make uh, different assumptions uh, to avoid these uh, searchings in a huge detail space, such as dividing the searching uh, the embedding dimension into the column right uh, sub uh, dimensions and grouping the feature values and assigning uh, group embedding dimensions for all the values. Besides, the combination uh, based embedding uh, learning approach is a novel representation learning uh, methods, which uh, can significantly reduce the searching space with more detailed uh, space. So for the uh, feature embedding search component, it's uh, potential to combine the automated feature representations with the model compressions or the quantization. And next part is about the feature interaction. Depending on the uh, searching space, the existing methods can be grouped into, into three categories, like the feature interaction search, interaction function search, as well as the interaction block search. Feature interaction search aims to search the beneficial feature interactions. After that, the interaction function search search the suitable interaction functions for different uh, feature pairs. At last, the interaction block search aims to take the original features as a whole and search optimal networks with uh, predefined optimal operations. And at the same time, uh, we can see that uh, the existing interaction search and the interaction function search, uh, this kind of methods, uh, bridge huge uh, search space, especially for considering uh, high order feature interactions in recommender systems. While the in interaction block search can reduce the search space with more detailed space. So for these in feature interactions, most existing work focus on the uh, global feature interaction search while the uh, personalized feature interaction search for different users uh, we may unexplore due to the huge uh, space search. So besides, uh, we can consider in, to incorporate complex interaction operators from other fields like the CV and the NLP to generate more diverse interaction functions in the future. Our next part is about the model training in deep recommender systems. Large function-based optimization methods for, for certain uh, it takes the model training while the searching optimal loss function automatically, it brings a significant results. So uh, from the loss function and to uh, transform learning, uh, our researchers uh, uh, gradually realize the more uh, flexible and efficient methodology to uh, facilitate the model training. So in the future, more uh, complex direction for uh, model training should be explored, such as uh, the uh, optimizer setting and the uh, gradient direction uh, guidance. As for the uh, comprehensive search in deep recommender systems, and we know existing uh, comprehensive search methods are mainly focused on the feature embedding and the uh, feature inter interaction uh, components. And some works also consider the NLP structure for the feature uh, predictions, while other parts like the 
uh, we know the sequential features uh, modeling uh, should uh, uh, get fewer attentions. So uh, this uh, searching space is very large for a uh, comprehensive search since it consider uh, multiple components. So uh, we need efficient uh, searching strategies uh, in these components. In the future, it's potential uh, to convert this, uh, the hewer, a heterogeneous search space into a homogeneous uh, unified search uh, space and also performs efficient search uh, algorithms. In addition, uh, to the potential uh, research uh, direction in, in existing uh, auto uh, ML enhanced uh, de recommender system, I just shared, uh, there are still many opportunities for future directions. For example, the multitask learning, uh, this is a, 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 a recommendation that consider different uh, revenues targets is one of the most important technique in industry uh, recommendations. So uh, it's important to uh, design and automatic algorithms for multitask recommendations. And thus, uh, users uh, who were histor historical uh, behavior uh, have different dimensions of inches. So uh, we can automatically retrieve beneficial historical uh, behaviors to better model users' uh, preferences. Okay, I think uh, this is all of our tutorial. If you are interested in this topic, uh, please uh, refer to our service for more detail. And us, uh, welcome to contact us for more uh, for any kinds of collaborations. For example. Huawei Noah uh, Labs are hiring uh, some global outstanding researchers. You are uh, welcome to join uh, this reach up group for more details if you are interested. And Professor Xiang Yi Zhao uh, from City University of Hong Kong and I from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University are uh, recruiting some PhD students and research uh, assistants. Uh, you can contact us if you want to start your PhD degree at Hong Kong. So uh, thank you for your listening and we are ready to take your question. Okay, uh, thank you again.